Hello friends and welcome to Charlie's Creative Corner. I'm glad you could come by today. It's been a minute. I haven't been around for a while. Things have been kind of crazy. I had to take my little kitty. You could probably see him sleeping back there. See him back there zonked out. Had to take him back into the uh, vet. His pen was coming out. So we had to take him back in and luckily we caught it in time while well, we were hanging out and we noticed, wow, that looks like it's come out quite a bit. And sure enough, it had moved quite a bit and it was almost to the break. And luckily we were able to get him in in time before it got to that break. And he was the vet was able to put that back in there. He put a few staples around it this time to kind of make it stay in place. And he was really restless. So they gave him a... Uh, anxiety pill of sorts to kind of keep him calm and keep him from like maybe pulling on and if that's what it happened or whatever so that ordeal is finished um hang on a second i got something to show you here so we went out and saw the cranes this weekend and we got a way better view of them and i got some video i'm not gonna i was gonna upload it and stuff into the video but i'm just gonna kind of show you through my thing here um but it they it turned out so cool like we went down further we kind of took the whole day and we went out and we went to i found a little map and there were little areas where you could go and look at uh off the road view uh because during the day they go out into the fields and they go to eat all that corn and stuff and in the fields it's left over and you can go out there and we saw so many i mean I, it was insane and there were four or five different stops we went to and then the last stop was an actual viewing area and there was a little place kind of away from the crowd kind of down the river just a little bit and i got some amazing footage here so i'm going to show you a little clip of that real quick Hopefully y'all can see this and hear it also. I don't know if that works. Let me turn it up here. Hang on. And as you can see, there's so many. In this one, they were coming in and landing right by where we were. It was really cool. I, that's not really focused too well, but it was so fun. So that was just, that's just a little taste of what I captured. It was kind of getting hard to film because it was getting dark and you can't really film them. But my husband did get some really, really cool pictures. So we're going to try and go out again. We've got nothing but rain for the past two days and it's supposed to snow again. And we'll see what happens. I don't know. But it was, it was a good time. It was needed. It's always nice to get out in nature and just kind of have a day in nature. We're going to... I'll show you some of the things I've been doing. I am waiting on supplies. So I'm going to be doing something way different from what I usually do today. But I have a big order that I'm waiting on. So my crane bag that I was working on, I totally messed it up. And I was getting really far on it. 
and I'm going to have to start this entirely over. So maybe we can do a video together, I guess, because I screwed up bad somewhere. And uh, this is what I got so far. And it looks really cool. But the edges are not lining up correctly. So I have to start this completely over which is fine because I wanted to do all opaque beads anyway and I'm waiting on my order so when I get my order I'm going to restart this and maybe we can all do it together because what I think I did is when you come around there's like a I would call it like a positive and negative like a in bead and out bead and with each one that you end on you have to insert the bead or the needle a certain way to come back out the right direction and I think I got interrupted or I sat it down and I didn't mark it right and it ended up looking real crooked if you see that see how crooked that is there because this is the back and yeah so I'm really bummed I'm really bummed about that because it was looking really cool like it looks great but So that's going to be a uh, way uh, I'm going to wait on that one until I get my supplies. And then I started another project and I have to wait. Whoops. And I have to wait until I get more supplies. I uh, started a medicine bag and I was able to beat it nice and I was able to get my fringe on. This is what it looks like. Okay. But... I mean, I even got it cut and everything and ready for the stuff, but I cannot get it sewn together up here um, when all the pieces are together with the fringe because I don't have a strong enough needle. So I have, I do have some Glover's needles on the way, and I also have a punch on the way. I, I took the dive and took the plunge and bought myself some leather tools. So because I went over to our local craft store and I was able to find a big thing of leather for like, I got it for eight bucks. So it was a really gr great deal because it was on sale, 40% off. And it was, here I can show you, um, literally a lot of leather a lot I mean we're talking like you know and good quality it's not bad quality that's just one piece it also comes with a there's a green in here a green one there's like a blue color and there's also just a little bit of gray but I got that for eight dollars so and I did have leather on my list to order so I was really excited about this. They didn't have that last time I went in. So I don't know if they found something in the back and just put it out there or what. But so I got myself a punch on the way and an awl and uh, some Glover's needles and just some things to get some leather work started. I'm real excited to start some leather work. I've been wanting to do some and I've been wanting to incorporate it. Sorry, I got to put my stuff away here. Um, I've been wanting to incorporate it in with my beading. So I am real excited about that. Um, as far as projects go, that's pretty much all I have going right now for beadwork. But I started a new project today, uh, yesterday. And it's really cute and it's really fun. And it's something completely different from what I usually do on my channel. I do do this. I do a lot of uh, work like this off my channel but uh this is something i thought we could all kind of get behind it's really fun and so i am going to go through with you guys today on how to make this little guy now this is he's going to be part of a, a carousel okay but this is felt with some embroidery stitches and some sequins He's got a little mane here. It's so cute. And it's, I mean, it's time consuming, but it's not like really hard. Like I did this in a few hours, 
So it's not really hard, but I'm for the carousel, we're going to need three of these. And then I have another pattern for, they're going to be little carousel roosters decorated that go with him. And the roosters are a little more uh, complicated, but uh, I thought we could make this today and you don't have to make him into a carousel. You don't have to hang him. You know, this is just part of it. He, I mean, there's going to be beads coming down this and he's going to hang from a felted carousel with his little buddies. So uh, that's what we're going to work on today. And it's going to be a little bit different from what we're used to, but it's going to be fun. I, I think you guys will enjoy it, especially if you like to sew. It's it's a nice little sew, sewing project. So um, get this out of the way here. As far as our supplies go, um, you're going to need a pattern. And now the pattern isn't very difficult. So you have his, basically the only pieces that you need for the pattern are his body, his little tail, and his mane. And you can draw this up on your own. It's not hard to draw up. So this right here is the pattern for his body. And it's, it's really easy, a couple ovals, a circle, and then just add some legs and kind of, you know, uh, shape it a little bit. And so that's your, that's going to be the body pattern. And I just cut mine into, you know, I traced this because this came from an old book I had, a really old book. I think it's from like the 60s or 70s. I don't know. But I thought it was cute. So I was like, we're doing it. But I traced it. And so you can you can just put it on some paper or cardboard. You could draw it on there or whatever. Um, Size-wise, he is about five inches by five. He's not very big, about five by five. So, and so that's the pattern for his body. And I mean, you could always screenshot that and kind of look up at it and work, you know, draw your own. So, I mean, it's not hard to draw at all. And then you're going to need his little tail, which is a really simple little piece. That's just a little, you know, just a little tail. That's all he needs is just a little tail coming up. Or sorry, coming down like that. Okay. And then the only other part is the end or the, the main. And that's like a kind of like a C shape. But the, the key with the main is you want to make sure that it fits behind his head. You want to have it overlap. I don't know if you can see that kind of overlap because you're going to be sewing this with the other piece in between. So that's got to be able to sandwich in between those two pieces. So you want that mane to overlap his head. And it's really easy. It'd be super easy to draw up. So we'll kind of go through more of that as we cut them out. And so you're going to need a pattern. You're going to need felt, and I would recommend two kind of uh, contrasting colors. Like this one I did the, like a mauve color with the, the blue. And the one I'm going to do with you guys today, I'm going to do purple and orange. Okay. So just two, two pieces. You don't need a lot of, of it, of uh, felt. Like for the main and stuff, you need barely any felt at all. So if you have scraps or something you want to use, you can use it. You're going to need three different colors of embroidery floss. Um, now, mind you, if you're going to do all three of the horses and you want to do the whole carousel set, you're going to need different colors for each horse and uh, different colored embroidery floss for each horse because they just, they look a lot cooler when you can add, like I had a darker blue colored embroidery floss and then like a silvery blue colored one for the eye and then the details on that. Okay. So you're going to need at least three colors for each horse. And for mine, I picked out three different little colors here. And then uh, you're going to need a pair of scissors. Nice for cutting felt. And then I also use my embroidery scissors uh, just to cut his mane, do the little, to do the, uh, the fringe on his little mane and tail because these work great for that because they're, they're tiny and they're really sharp. So they work really good for that. Um, you're also going to need um, 
some pins and a needle. So you want to have a good amount of a handful of straight pins available and you're going to want a, you know, a blunt needle works fine. You don't need a, a sharp needle for this. Uh, I would actually recommend a blunter needle, more of a tapestry needle and uh, a needle floss or a, sorry, a needle threader would comes in really handy, especially when you're threading the uh, embroidery floss. And then the next thing is some sequins. And these are little ones, but you want a, a little one and like some bigger ones, a couple different shapes of sequins. It doesn't really matter the color on those. It's up to you what colors you want to use. Like these are the bigger ones here. And I just got the um, multicolored. I thought that would be the easiest instead of going and just getting one color. I thought it'd be kind of cute. And I'm going to need these colors for the rooster that we're going to do also. Um, you, and I like to have like a little kind of a sharp or uh, a fine pointed Sharpie pen. And I do that because when I did this design around his body, I drew that in first lightly with my Sharpie on the felt. And then I stitched over it just so both sides looked really uniform. You know, that's that's the key. So and and then the thread hanging from the top of him here is just the nylon thread so that's easy enough and that's it for supplies i will kind of bring you down to my table here and we'll get started on this and get her going all righty so i'm going to get my scissors here and then the body i'm going to do in orange and so what i want to do is I'm going to take my felt and I'm going to pin this onto there and turn that just a little and then um, we'll trace around it. We'll pin it on there and, and uh, cut it out. Now, sometimes you can do double, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that with this. So I'm just going to cut out and try this way. I think it might work. We'll just do that. And you can do that if you have a, a felt piece that you can double up. If not, then you'll have to do it one at a time. My, the other one I had to do it one at a time because I didn't have much left for, uh, I didn't have enough felt to uh, do it this way. And then I'm gonna take some pins and just there bring you in a little I'm gonna take some pins and just pin that to the felt. I'm just going to cut around this.
Alrighty, got that cut out. We'll take uh, our pens off here. Okay, so you're gonna need two of those. So we got two of those right there. So we need two body pieces. Okay, Oops, set this aside. And then for my mane and his tail, for his tail and mane, I picked dark purple. And I don't know if you can really tell if that's dark purple, but that's a dark purple color. And I'm gonna just pin these on here and cut those out also. I kind of cut my shape here. And just put a pin or two in there just to keep it in place. You don't want it moving around on you. go cut around that real quick like and sometimes with the smaller pieces the embroidery scissors work better because the big scissors can make it kind of hard I always, you know, cut a little ways away from my pattern. I don't want to cut my pattern and ruin it. All right, there's that piece. So this is his mane, and you only need one because that's going to sandwich in between these two pieces like that. Now, got that done, and now we need his tail. I can find where I put the little tiny piece. I think I lost it. All right, found it. It was on. It blew underneath my computer. And see, this piece is the inside of this here. I'm just going to use that up for the tail. No sense wasting it. We'll use a little piece of leftover felt for that. I don't want, and I just hold my smaller pieces, but just make sure that it doesn't move in the process of cutting it. And there's the little tail and you only need one of those also so we got our felt cut out and you know I always save my patterns I put them in a little envelope and save them even if I've made all of them that I'm gonna make I like to keep them just in case I want to make them again now what you're gonna want to do is you can set your mane and tail aside we're not going to use those for a little while now I flip this inside out Okay, because you want them basically facing each other because both sides, when you connect them, are going to be, you know what I'm saying? So you're going to be doing both sides. Now, I'm going to take my Sharpie marker here, and I'm just going to kind of go, I'll zoom me in just a touch. I'm just kind of going to go around and make my design that I so. Uh, sewed on this guy and make it uniform here so I like to start at this leg and I don't go too close to the edge because we're going to be sewing the edge and you kind of want the pattern in a little bit and I don't do a whole uh, very big or a very uh, bold markings because you don't want it to come through and you also uh, sitting there focusing here. 
Don't want your marker showing after you've sewn your stitches on. Go about maybe a quarter of an inch in. I just do this so I make sure that everything's going to be nice and uniform. And then I'm kind of a, I can kind of be a crooked str uh, stitcher, so I like to make sure my stitches are going to be straight. And I don't go all the way down the head, I go about halfway the head, down the head, like that. And then when this is done, this shape is done, I like to take my, my pen and I'm going to bring this up to meet this design up here. I think that might have been a little too high, but that's okay, it's not going to hurt nothing. Maybe not. I don't know. Looks fine to me. And I'm going to do the same on this guy here. Now always make sure that it's the opposite side. So we marked that one. We want to mark this side. Okay. And it's just to kind of make everything uniform and nice when you stitch. You don't have to do this step. This is just something I like to do. I like to make sure that it's going to look nice because we're going to be stitching both sides of our little horse here. I mean, you don't have to use felt, but felt for me, I have a lot of it, first of all. And secondly, uh, I like the pretty colors. Felt has a lot of nice colors and it's soft. So it's like a stuffy, you know, it's really cute. So we have our little designs marked on there for our stitching. All right, that's all we needed to do there. We can pick whichever side we want to stitch first. Now for the first embroidery, I'm going to go with my uh, floss, or I'm sorry, my, that's a stitcher's term, my thread that matches the mane, okay? So the darker purple, I'm going to use I'm going to do about a little over an arm's length on this because it does take quite a, quite a lot of thread to do this. Now I separate mine into three threads and if you've never separated uh, embroidery floss before you basically I like to give it a little tap on the top kind of separates that end a little okay and then I will take I'm trying to get an outside one, it doesn't really matter. I'll take one of the threads there and I hold this, I pinch it, not tight, just enough. And I just pull through. And that will separate your, your uh, embroidery floss from the strand. And it won't not, which is awesome. And once again, we will do that again. We will take one and pull it through. You know, you'll see it bunching up down here. And then it just kind of falls back into place. And that's the easiest way I have ever found to separate my embroidery floss. And I do three threads and make sure you're doing one thread at a time because it'll not if you don't if you do more than one if you do two at a time it's going to knot up really bad so make sure you're doing one at a time just be patient it's worth it you don't want to knot up all your thread and then I just reconnect them at the top here like so and there we have our three threads and we will get our needle 
and our threader. I just stick it, get something stuck to that. Stick that through there. And there we're threaded. And then I do a quick knot at the bottom. That was just a lazy knot. And that is just take your finger with the, I use a little spit. It helps wrap it around and roll to the tip of your finger. Take your other finger with your nail and pull down and then you have a knot. Really easy to do. Now we're going to start with the simple embroidery stitch. Um, it is called the chain stitch and the chain stitch it's nice and easy and it makes a beautiful effect. Now pick up our needle here. I'm going to start at the top of his head right here. Let's see if I can bring you in a little. And what I like to do, I'll start at the top over here of his head. I just bring my needle up from the bottom and pull through like that. And then I put my needle right next to that hole. Okay. And then I'm going to take it and bring it up and make sure I'm on my line that I drew. So take your needle through next, right, like right next to that and bring it up. And then I take my thread and I just set it right over the top of that needle. Okay. And then just pull through and when you pull it it'll make your first chain okay you don't have to pull too hard you don't want to pull it too hard and bunch it up now for our second chain we're just going to take our needle and put it right where that thread's coming up and we're going to go down and push our needle up next to it, just like we did that first one, bring our thread behind the needle. Okay. And then just pull and pull gently. You don't have to pull fast or anything like that. It'll has more chance of knotting if you pull it fast. And then we have our second chain. Okay. We'll do that again. Put our needle right next to where the thread is coming out here. Stick our needle up and through and try and keep kind of a uniform distance with each one the best you can. Stick our thread behind our needle and pull through just like that. And there we go. And you can see our chain stitch coming in. Okay. I'm going to readjust my camera here real quick. Now, when we do this, I like to, the reason I like to start at the top of his head is I'll work my way up over his head, down his back, through his two legs and belly, and then up through the neck, and that's it. So it makes it nice and easy that way. I like to keep my thread on the left, depending on what, if you're right or left-handed. I'm right-handed, so I like to keep my thread on the left when I do my chain stitch and just come back up through that right next go through next to where that thread is and come up through behind it. I guess you'd say in front of it. I don't know. And then bring your thread over and pull through really easy, simple stitch. And it makes wonderful effect. If you don't get a tangled up mess like I do, there we go. It's just, it's a really pretty little stitch. I don't know why we just here. I think I pulled a little too tight on this one. That's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And come back through and under.
Now we're gonna have to stitch both sides of these. So it's up to you if you wanna do the chain stitch this way and then do it on this one and then, you know, or just do one side at a time. That's entirely up to you, however you wanna do them. But both sides need to be embroidered. Um, it's kind of a fun little pattern though. Uh, I like the chain stitch on there. And then we're gonna add another stitch over the top of the chain stitch to make it add a little more dimension. And I like how the sequins really kind of add some sparkle to them. It's a pretty cute little, uh, pretty cute little design. And I really wanted to do it. I, it sucks that I'm waiting for other supplies, but I figured, well, I don't have to be on complete lull on my channel. I can do other things. It doesn't have to always be beading. And there might be some people out there who don't bead who might want to do some felt sewing. And I love to felt sew. It was It's something I picked up, oh, probably about two or three years ago. And I love to do it. And you can make so many things with it. And it's a really fun thing to do. It's real relaxing. And it's pretty inexpensive also. All right, I'm going to continue. I'm going to sew this one, and then I'm going to also sew him. And I will be right back, okay? And, and if you want to do the same with yours, that's fine. And pause the video. Feel free. But I'm going to do it mainly because I want to show you how to do the whole thing. So I'm going to do my chain stitch on this side of the horse, and then I'm going to do it on this side. So I will be right back. Now, I am uh, running low a little bit on thread which sucks because I'm so close to having it done and I'm going to show you how to continue on uh, and add a new thread now when you get to your corners or uh, turns all you do is just kind of go with it like say you in I, I always try to kind of end my hoop on a uh, corner there and then I can just continue on which makes it nice now uh, I'm gonna have to tie off unfortunately now what I do is see you're coming up through the inside of this hoop and you want to make sure that you get that needle on the other side of that so that thread will come down and pin that down okay and then just do a little quick you know, hoop knot at the back. I, I do a couple to make sure it's secure. And that way, if you need a new thread, you know what to do. But always just make sure that you're coming down on the other side, like right here, of that hoop. So see how that pinned that down? You want to make sure you have that uh, chain pinned down. Now... I'm going to get another thread here. I'll load another thread. Okay, so I got that threaded. I'm just going to do another quick knot. So give your finger a little lick, wrap it around, roll it up to the tip, and pull down. Real simple. Now, to st restart a thread, all you have to do is go up behind where you left off. Okay. So come up underneath there, and then you're just going to want to do the same that you would do with the others. Go through where that's, where you're coming in, through here. See so your thread's coming out here, so you want to go through that same area as close as possible. And then just continue on your chain stitch, just like that. And you know, the larger you make your chains, the bigger your hoops are going to look, but you can make them smaller. But see, we're going to add another stitch on top of our chain stitch, and that's just going to be all the more stitches you're going to have to add to this. So it depends if you want it to look more fine and detailed, you can make smaller. I kind of did smaller ones on this one, but I'm going to do bigger ones on this one. They don't all have to look the same. They're going to be different horses, so they're, you know, Maybe make one bigger, make one smaller, kind of add their own 
uniqueness to each horse if you want, or you can make them all completely uniform if you want. That's entirely up to you. But uh, you definitely want to, uh, you know, keep in mind how large and how small you're making them just for your own reference and how much work you want to put into them. It all kind of depends. So this is going to be our last, this is going to be my last um, chain here. We're going to bring that through and then we're just going to tack it down like we did the last one. So our thread's coming on this side of the, the circle there. You see that little hoop and you just want to go on the other side of that and make sure you pin that down because otherwise that's not going to lay flat and it's going to come apart. So you may, you want to make sure that you pin that chain down like that. And that is our first side there. And I'm just going to do the same to tie off as I did. None of this is going to show. This is all going to be stuffed in on the inside of our horse. So you don't have to worry about any of your knots and things showing. Just bring that through. Add a knot. And I'm going to do a double, just like that. There, looks good. Okay, and I'm going to trim that. So we got one side done. I'm going to get the other side done just so that when I we get to that point, we can just put them together and sew them up. So I'm going to do this side now, and I will be right back. All right, so I got my chain stitch finished on both of them here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a stitch over our chain stitch to add a little more dimension to it. I am going to use a, I like to use a lighter color here for this stitch. Okay, I think it really contrasts nice and looks good. So I'm going to go with a kind of a brighter yellow with mine. Um, and it looks like I already have a little bit cut here. So I use two strands of my floss so we'll separate two out of there for this stitch and get them put together here here we go and we'll thread it up real quick whoops i just dropped my needle threader Here it is. Okay. Get that on there. I miss I missed one. Dang it. Try that again. There we go. Alrighty. I'm going to just do another quick knot. Now, the stitch that we're going to be doing here is the, it's called the fly stitch. And it's just another kind of a fancy decorative embroidery stitch. Now, it's not really that complicated actually. It's, it's really quite simple. When I do this one, I start here by the neck because we're going to come around and then when we get to the end we're going to stick a sequin there so that way we don't have to come back now when it comes to the fly stitch it's actually quite simple what you're going to want to do that'll focus for you there you want to come down let's see you know i don't really think it matters what direction uh I did start, I started at the head on this one. So they're going to go this way. See, they kind of look like little arrows on there. So I don't really think it matters. I'm going to, I like to go a little bit, you know, you see your whole uh, hoop here. I like to go a little towards the bottom. Or let's see, we're, we can go, hang on, let me see here. I'm going to do one here and we'll see. Okay. 
Yeah, we'll go towards the bottom. I was debating on that or the top. And I go in on one side and then I jump over to the other side and go in directly across from that one I put. Now, you don't want to pull all the way through. You want to leave this little hoop here. This little, kind of looks like a little bridge sticking up out of there. You want to leave that there. And what you want to do, depending on the direction you want it to go, I want mine up more the top. So I'm going to go to the top in between my chain here. Okay. And I want my needle on coming towards me on the with that thread like that on the other side. See how that's looking like that? You don't want it on this side because you won't it won't uh, grab your thread when you come back down. So you want it on that side, okay? You want your needle on the side towards you and your thread on the opposite. You want to pull that through, just gently, just give it a little pull, and then come up even higher on that chain. I'm going to come up even higher on that, and this is going to create that V look, like that. You see that? Now, we'll do that again. I'll try and bring us a little closer here. Maybe it won't blur so much. Now, so we're going to go. It's so dark out today. I always film when it's dark. It's so funny. You want to go kind of towards the bottom of your chain on the on the opposite side so bring that up like that and then come exactly across from that come bring your needle in okay and that's going to create that hoop there see that hoop there now you want to bring your needle up more towards the tip of your chain and make sure it'll focus. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Oh, come on. Wait, it doesn't want to, does it? Well, you want your needle. focusing in on this stuff back here or not. Well, hopefully you guys can see it. But you want your needle to be coming up in front of your floss. Okay? Like that. So when you pull through, and you bring it back down on the other side. See, here it is right here. You want to go on the other side and up a little higher and bring it through. And that creates your V shape, okay? And we'll do that again. So you want to come up on the, close to the bottom. And you can bring your little legs out even further if you want. And then down on the other side, right directly across from it. Okay, don't pull all the way through, leave that hoop. Bring your needle up from the top of the center of your chain. Make sure your needle is on this side here, or the side towards you. And then pull down, not too tight. And then come up to the tip, tip top there, bring it through, and pull down. And that creates our, our fly stitch. We'll do a few more of those. Kind of towards the bottom, either side of that. Directly across. Leave your little hoop, come up to your chain, that. pull, and then gently, and then 
come back down to create your little fly pattern. And you're gonna to wanna to do that over every single chain. So it takes a minute to do the fly stitch part, but it's totally worth it because it looks amazing. They look so nice. And I always go up a little higher with my last stitch there. That kind of creates a nice V. Just do that all the way around. I like that yellow and purple together. That looks really pretty. Yeah, I got this book at uh, an antique store in one of our neighboring towns. And it is the cutest little book. It has the cutest things in it. And I saw this and I was like, I totally want to make this. And I was just looking for something to do you know <laughs> and while I waited on my supplies and I was like you know what I can do a video for this I mean other people might want to do it too so I figured I'd bust out a video for us looks pretty cute though now the fly stitch I mean if you want you can bring your points out a little further on the sides of your uh chain stitches there it's all up to you and like I said like you can tell now it depends on how close you put together your chains how small they are and how big they are and how many of your fly stitches you're gonna get in there so it's all up to you if you want a more separated look or if you want a more compact look with them it all depends on how big you make your chain stitches stitches so you're gonna want to keep that in mind when you make these and, you know, like I said, each horse doesn't have to be the same. They can be different. They can all have their own little different personalities and look different from the other. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I know this one's going to look way different from the first one I did, but there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, all the horses in the carousel aren't the same, so they're always quite elaborate and different from one another. And you don't have to know your embroidery too well. This is something that's easy enough to do and they're easy enough stitches to where you don't have to be like an embroidery professional or pro to be able to do these. They're really easy embroidery stitches. And you don't have to have the fanciest floss either. I mean, even if you just go get a little packet at the store of, you know, multi-colored packet where there's a bunch of different colors in there for I think you'd think they're usually about eight to ten bucks it doesn't matter they don't have to be the fancy expensive DMC's or anything like that they you know I just have these on hand for my own personal cross stitching um, you can use any thread that you want actually so it's all up to you All right, so I'm going to keep working on my fly stitch. It looks really cute. And mind you, like I said, these don't have to be perfect. Actually, like the more 
detailed and imperfect they are, I think the cuter they are. So, um, like I said, you can get a packet of felt, I want to say Walmart for cheap, and you can get a packet of your embroidery floss there and a packet of sequins or if you have sequins at home. A lot of these tools or uh, uh, supplies are quite inexpensive. So just kind of look around, see what you got at home. I mean, you don't have to use embroidery floss. It does make it a lot prettier with the colors and how they contrast and work together and add some brightness to it. But it's, it's in a pretty in, in, inexpensive project. So be nice and easy too for a beginner uh, stitcher. So I'm going to continue working on my fly stitches and then I will come back and show you how to do the rest. Now with your fly stitch, if you do run out of thread, don't fret because you can just finish your last and final stitch and then just tie it off and then add another in and just start like you did at the beginning. It's a really easy, you don't have to worry about pinning it down because that's what you do when you do your final stitch on your last uh, fly. So I will be right back. So I got my uh, fly stitch done on both my sides. My other guy's done over here with that, this part. So what we want to do, you should be, on your last stitch, you should be coming from this end. It should be, your, your last stitch should be over here by the face on the forehead. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to pick out a sequin. And I have these bigger guys here. And I also have these kind of, you can tell, you can just totally tell the size there, the difference in sizes. I'm going to use, you're going to want to use a larger sequin for the forehead. So I went with, uh, if I can pick one up, I'm going to go with gold. I, I tried the pink one and I thought it'd be kind of like the purple, but it didn't quite, uh, look right. So I'm going to go with the gold one here. Now your thread's going to be on the back. Leave it on the back coming out of the back like this after your last fly stitch on that last chain. And I'll bring in just touch. No, too much there. There we go. Now what you're going to do is you want to take your sequin and kind of place it just a little overlapping that tip of that uh, the, the purple chain stitch there. You want to go just a little bit over, not too much, just to make it look connected. And these can be kind of tricky to find that center, but that's okay. We'll get through it. So I kind of hold it on onto it with my thumb and my finger back here, and I just kind of work it around, and you'll eventually find your hole. And this is a sequin stitch, embroidery sequin stitch here, and you just want to bring your needle up through. And then come back down and we're going to go all the way around and you see these little lines on the sequin that's kind of where you want to line up your thread and use them kind of as a guide to know where to put your thread so we got one in there and then i'm going to come back up through that hole again okay and then when you want to bring it down just just kind of bring your needle kind of where it's just barely rubbing on the side of that sequin. I mean, you could go out a little if you want. It's entirely up to you how you want to go about doing it. Get as creative as you want with it. And there's two, and I'm just going to go around for each one of these lines on the sequin. I'm going to go all the way around like that. And we will get her attached here. Just like that. couple more here and this is not his eye we're gonna stitch the eye in this is just a little like forehead decoration on him and the last one this kind of makes a little kind of a little star effect on the sequin there I didn't line that one up too well but that's all right I'm not gonna lose sleep over it and then I just kind of do a little double knot on the back and snip it off. Just 
just like that. There we go. And that is our outside of our body and our little forehead decoration there. So that's all done. Now I think we're going to get the eye put on here. And the eye, I used, because we only, we're only using two threads on this one from the leftovers. So you can set that aside because I used three for the eye and the rest of the uh, pattern on him. Because I, I like it to look a little more bold. I kind of liked this a little more fine on here and then make the other patterns a little more bold on there. I just thought it looked a little bit better that way. So we'll separate three threads here. Two and three. All right, we'll get these uh, threaded here. Put them all together. And the third one here. Whoops, kind of stuck to my finger. There we go. All right, get that threaded there. Now I'm gonna take my marker again, my two little guys here, and I'm going to draw the eye on. Now, um, I kind of like it, it's just like a little uh, crescent shape, I guess, or C shape. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it, get it. I like that. Just so they kind of kind of look similar. This one might be a little higher, but that's all right. It won't hurt nothing. All right, that way we kind of know where our eye is going to go. So the eye is just another, let's put a knot in our thread here. The eye is just another uh, chain stitch. And I make these a little smaller because it's in a smaller space. I can usually get about three chain stitches in here. So... We'll put three chain stitches here real quick. And you know, just kind of kind of gauge it best you can. I don't make them quite as big on the eye. Make them a little smaller. There we go. There we go. And then we're going to pin that down on the end. What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? He woke up. There we go. And then I'm going to add some eyelashes and you can just kind of do what you want with this. I just do a little pin stitch, kind of however many you like. If you want more, then you can add a few more. Just make a little, a few little eyelashes. I have to flip him upside down. I do better if I have him upside down when I do this. And just go all the way underneath the eye. Oh, 
Not easy enough. What's up? What, what's up, Shady? He's a talking. No, you can't come out. You gotta stay in there. I'm sorry. I know it's awful. He's gotta stay in that crate. We don't need a, the pen coming out again. He's gotta be in there for a while. I feel so bad for the poor little fella. I'm gonna do one more here. I try to keep them all the same length. If not, we're not going after perfection here. And there we have the little eye. So cute. I'm going to tie off on that. Just how I do on the rest of them. I just go through and do a little double knot. Nothing fancy. And we'll just like so and that is what we got so far we're almost finished with the just got to do the little design here I'm gonna sew on his other eye real quick and I will be right back all right so we got that part done now we just need to do the little design on his side so you're gonna need the two different sized uh, sequence for this so I'm gonna get a big one here I need a big gold one whoops just gonna get two out because I'm gonna need two so you'll need two big gold ones one for each side and then we're gonna need some little guys too so um what you want to do I eyeball this one I don't draw this on here you want to take your sequin and kind of center it as best you can because we're going to do little branches kind of that come out one down this leg one down this leg and one kind of up his neck so I'm going to bring that down just a touch I'm going to say probably about right there and this is just eyeballing it make sure you got a knot on the end of your thread so just do a quick knot on the end of your thread you want to do is you just want to bring your needle up through the sequin and now we're going to attach the sequin a little different than we did this one up here because we're going to attach it um i'll show you with this guy the uh see how the sequin where i attached it with the thread continues on the branches that come down on his side so for example if you come up bring it up through to where you're going to go with that one or you're going to go through with that one etc so i'm going to go with this one what i like to do is lose my needle <laughs> give me a second here and reattach my needle i lost it in my pin cushion okay now what you're going to want it what you're going to want to do is I like to kind of take my thread and bring it where I think I'm going to go with it. And I think I'm going to go about right there. So I'm going to bring my needle down right there. Okay. Pull it through. And then we're going to go through this one again. Through the center. And then for this side, we're probably going to go about right there. So I'm going to bring that down through there and then this one, pull it through. I'm going to go probably about right here and so I'm going to bring it down through here. Now for this one we're going to do a uh, more fly stitch but this one's just a little bit different because it's got little branches that go off of it. So I'm going to start off with a fly stitch. And so I'm going to start going off of this branch here. And so I'm going to go up a little higher, probably about to there. And I'm going to go over right next to it like that. Okay. And we're going to leave that gap, leave that open. Don't pull all the way through. And then we're going to come up 
where that thread's coming out of that sequin. Okay, make sure our needle this time is going to be on this side because we want to pin that down because you got to think in the direction you're, you're going. So we want to pull that up through, okay, and then bring it back down to pin it down. And now we're going to add a branch to that. And so we're going to do it like, I'm going to go up just a little above my, my fly stitch. I'm just going to pull up through, and then I'm going to come back down to the center of that fly stitch. Okay, and that's going to give us our little branch coming out of there. Oh. So you're going to have something like that. Okay, and then we're going to do the same. You know, we're coming out. That's kind of the tip of that there. So we want to come up a little ways from that. And then across like that. Don't go all the way through. And then come back up to the tip of that branch. Okay. Just like that. Make sure that needle's on the opposite side there. Make sure the needle's coming up to where it's going to pull the direction you that arrow you want it to be. And then pin it down. Okay. And I'm going to add another one. You can go as far as you want. You can make this as long as you want. I think I might do three or four on this part. There's another little branch there. We'll add another fly stitch. Whoops. that pin it down Oops. I'm gonna do one more in there so I'm gonna add another branch now the key is we got to leave space because we're gonna put a little sequin at the end of this little branch of this so I'm gonna try and angle a little on that that. Keep dropping my needle. Pin that down. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to add another little branch. Right there and then I'm going to add my sequin there we go and so for this one I'm going to use little sequins itty bitty little guys and I'm going to use the same color you could use a different one if you want but I'm going to use gold again so I'm going to put and I always close my sequin container because you don't want sequins on the floor and then you just set it kind of where it's overlapping just a touch on that branch like that okay and try and hold on to it best you can it's a little tricky and when I attach this one I attach it like it's a continuation of the branch so I'm going to come up through that sequin and then I'm going to bring my needle back down right where that branch is laying Okay, just like that. And that kind of makes it look like a continuation of that branch. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to want to go, oh, I'll go about right there. Just like that. And there's our first little part of his body design, okay?
Now I'm going to, I'm not even going to detach my thread. I'm just going to jump because nobody's going to see this. Okay. So I'm going to get over here right by that, right there by that one. I'm just going to pull on through. Oh, whoops. I'm sorry. I'm going to go back down. Ignore that. I'm on chain stitch when we're doing fly stitch. So we're going to go above this. Go a little above it. And we'll go off to the side a little. And we'll bring that up through. Like that. And back down. Just like we did on the other side. Okay, we'll make a little branch. I'm going to have to kind of curve a little bit as I go. Do another fly stitch. I'm going to do one more. It's going to be cutting it close, but I'll make this branch a little shorter. Okay, we're going to add a little branch here. And we're going to put on another little gold sequin. And I always make sure that my curved part is going downward. See, this is, you can kind of tell the difference. I like mine to lay with the conical shape going this way and not up, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Because I want mine to lay flat on there. Put that through there. And that's our second little branch. Okay. How adorable is that? And I'm going to jump over again. We're going to do fly stitches over here. And this is a fun little project for anybody who likes to embroider too. So it's always fun to do, do some embroidery. And I'm not the best with embroidery. I'm way better at cross stitch, but I do know some. So I do have a book. Uh, it's a really great book and it has all the different embroidery stitches. And I have learned a lot from that.
you know, both sides don't have to match perfect and things like that. Like you want a little bit of a uh, uniqueness to this. So I think that it doesn't, I'm not particular about it. I am a kind of a perfectionist and I'm not very particular about it. So, you know, it's just the way it is. I like it unique and how each little horse will have their own unique patterns. Like the chains on this one are bigger than the chains on him but they're still going to look really great together. So I don't think that's going to matter in the long run. I think you just need to go with the flow and just once you've learned the stitches and where everything goes, just kind of sit back and enjoy it, you know, cause this is a really enjoyable little project. Um, so I wouldn't worry about being perfect with it. Okay, sorry, got interrupted there. Okay, now we'll add our little, final little branch. Cut. And our sequin. Cut through there. Cut. And like that. And that is the design on the side. How pretty is that? Oh my gosh, so pretty. I'm going to tie this off just like I do normally. Like I said, nobody's going to see this at all ever in the back. And then I am going to add, maybe, there we go. I'm going to add that part onto my other guy. Don't forget him because I totally noticed that I forgot to do my fly stitch on this side. Oh, bummer. But it still looks all right. I'm still going to hang them on there. I don't even care. <laughs> See, I don't mind my imperfections. That's what creativity, you know, it's part of. Yeah. So I'm going to add that onto here and then we will put it all together and make it into what it is. Now, I forgot to mention you will need some polyfill because we got to fill him up. We got to put stuffing in him. So any, some kind of stuffing that you might have. I like to use polyfill. You know, you could use cotton or something else that you might have on hand, you know, something like that. So uh, I will be right back and we will get to putting it all together. Okay, we're on our final steps here. Now you should have two little horse sides that mirror each other and have the same stitches on them. So that is everything and you're gonna need your tail piece, which I wanted to kind of fix that. That's just a little, just a little, there we go. You're gonna need your tail piece. You're gonna need your main piece for the main. Now, we're, what we wanna do is we want to get these all sandwiched together. I'm gonna pull out just a little bit for you here. Now, on the inside here, we're going to want to set and position the main first. So it's, you know, kind of position it the best you can. You want to make sure that there's enough coming up out of the top. You don't want it down or only a little bit showing. You want as much of that main coming up at the top as possible. So I'd say something about like that. And I'm going to set the other horse side on top of that. And then once you do that, you can kind of adjust it a little. I kind of like to push that in a little, make it more uniform, and then push this end in a little also. Now we're going to need some straight pins. So if you got some straight pins, we're going to need them because we got to pin this all in. And you want to make sure that that's sandwiched in there 
and that it has enough space to where when you sew it together, that's gonna be sewn in also. And when you're confident of where it is, stick a pin in there and hold it into place. And see that's coming out there. That's why we put our pins in. So we wanna get another pin and pin that in also. I'm gonna bring that in, kind of tuck it behind the neck like that. Kind of make it curved in. That looks real nice. There we go. And you know, see we got a good space here to sew it together because we gotta have enough space to sew it where it's gonna hold together. So we have our mane attached and we wanna make sure our bodies are lined up here. And I'm gonna, that looks nice and lined up there. I'm gonna put a pin over here in the head just to kind of keep it in place. Now with our tail, I kind of like it up a little bit higher on the back. Oh, probably about like that. Okay, and I'm just gonna stick a pin through that. And we'll remove these pins as we go. That way that'll stay when we while we stitch. And I'm gonna put a pin in the legs. Make sure that they stay somewhat uniform. Like that. So we have it all pinned together here. Okay. So we're all pinned together. And now we are ready to stitch it together and stuff it. And put our little hanger on it. So what you wanna do is you're gonna want a thread that matches the skin part, the body part of the, uh, the horse. Because when you're stitching, you don't wanna use a different colored thread because then you're gonna see all those stitches. So try and get a, a, a color as close to that as you can that matches the uh, body part, the orange, what is orange for me. So that's as close as I could get with my thread. So I use, I use two threads of my floss, these two put together. Okay. I don't like to use too thick a thread when it comes to stitching them together because it looks you can see it and it kind of looks a little thick and you know I like to kind of hide my threads so we're going to start stitching her together here what you want to do I start right here under the nose kind of in this little crease you want to take your needle make sure you got a knot in the bottom of your needle and stick it as close to that corner as you can and bring it up from the bottom in between uh, in between the two pieces okay you don't want to bring it through this piece because then you're not showing the reason we're going up through here is because we want our knot hidden so we want to bring that up through there and see then you'll see your knot is going to be sandwiched in between and hidden okay and we're going to blanket stitch right here. And blanket stitch is quite simple and it's a really pretty stitch and it finishes very nicely and makes a nice edge. So what you want to do is your thread's coming up out of the top and you want to put your needle through the back and come up right again where that thread is coming up in the same spot. Okay. Don't pull it all the way through because as you pull, I can stay untangled, I will show you. Um, when you pull through, you wanna bring your, your thread under and through the little hoop, okay? And then pull taunt, okay? Now with blanket stitch, you wanna keep your distance quite even when you're blanket stitching things together. A little trick I like to use is I'll take my Sharpie marker and I will make two little lines like that on my thumb, okay? And that way, when I'm holding my work, 
I can hold it there. Okay, my thread's coming out there. And I can make my stitch like that every single time. And it's a really easy way to keep your st stitches even. You want to, I'm trying to slide that knot in there. Okay, so that was our first blanket stitch. Now our second stitch, we want to come up from the bottom. You can see my, my mark right there. That'll help me keep my stitches even. I'm going to you want to come in far enough to where you're grabbing enough thread to where it's not going to tear or break, but you want it, you don't want it so far in it to where it looks funny. There's a happy medium there. So, I mean, you don't want to go too incredibly far, but you do want to make sure you're grabbing enough of the fabric. So up from underneath, come up through both pieces, pull your thread and you see there's a little gap here. Don't pull that all the way through. And I like to take my thread up under and through that hoop. And you'll see the knot kind of lay on the seam right there. It'll kind of lay down right there. And we'll go over to our next one. You can move your thumb over. Use your little marks on your thumb to keep track of how far. Like you put this where your last stitch was. And you put your new stitch through this at this mark here. And that way you can kind of keep your stitches nice and even. Pull through and come up underneath that hoop and pull again. And you want to kind of pull to where that, see that seam, at that seam here is where your thread is going to lay down. And you just kind of keep doing this from underneath, pull through. And through the hoop. It's a really easy stitch. It goes really fast, but it looks really nice. It looks very nice, nicely done and a pretty stitch. And it hides seams really well. And it looks really great for felt. Like the plushies, felt plushies look great with the blanket stitch. And it's a really simple stitch to learn. It's not hard at all to learn. We are going to change it up a little once we reach his mane here, though. And you can remove pins as you go. See how nice and uniform that looks? Really nice. And you don't want to go too far of a gap when you're doing in between each stitch because your fluff will fall out of it if you're not careful. And see, we're going to go right there to the tip of that mane, okay? Not enough light, there we go, that's a little better, huh? So you wanna go about to that mane. We'll do another blanket stitch here. And excuse me one moment while I grab my telephone. All right, where were we here? So we got our final, or our blanket stitch right here by the main. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to do a standard, just kind of like a pin stitch really to go through the main because our blanket stitch, if we do that, the blanket stitch wraps around so it would bunch up our main. So we can't do that there. So we have to use just a pin stitch here and you want to make sure that you're getting that main in the stitch that both of them, like both sides are on there and it's getting stitched in because otherwise um, it's just going to fall right out and it's not going to hold and you're going to have some issues. And I just got a knot, so hang on. Okay, so basically in or out from the bottom here. Here we go. Now we're going to want to just come back right next to it just kind of go back and forth. But see, in the end, in the back, you you don't want to be going, you want to make sure you're going through both, all of the fabric, and not just the one part. So you, you have to be very cautious of that as you pin this down. You have to be cautious that you're getting all of the fabric. And you can take your pin out, but I leave my pin until I've gotten through all of this. So just kind of pin it back and forth.
as you go. And I always check when I go in, I go kind of close to that last stitch on the back. You want to make sure you're getting that main pinned down with thread. So it's kind of just a little pin stitch. Make sure you're getting back there. And always go to the other side of your you want to go next to that thread, okay? Just kind of about making sure you're getting all that fabric. that and just go all the way through the main like this. I'm going to take this pin out. I don't need that anymore. And this is an easy enough stitch. Just keep double checking, making sure that you're getting the whole, all that mane in there. Let's see, mine kind of came out here at the bottom. I'm going to take this pin out. I'm going to readjust all that because I don't want to have it coming out. And I'm going to bring my pin down. Make sure that goes through. So this is vital that you get this right the first time because you don't want to have to pull stitches and pulling stitches in felt does not work very well at all it ends up just tearing the felt and you then you you got a mess so you want to make sure that you do it right the first time And you know, it doesn't hurt to kind of pull things back a little and make sure that you're getting that in there. Let's do that all the way to the base of this mane here. All right. Just like that. This should be our last stitch here. Here we got through the main. I'm gonna still I'm gonna put one one more right here. There we go. So I had to go to work and come back, so <laughs> I'm going to finish this video tonight. I'm bound and determined. Now we got the main pin stitched on there. Okay. Now we'll take this pin out now that we know that's secure. And I always like to double check. It looks real nice. Now we're going to have to restart our blanket stitch again. So we're going to come up. Oh, probably about there. and come through our our back here and we're just gonna 
as you can tell, my markings are gone on my thumb. So I'm just going to add a couple more here. A couple new ones. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to come down through the bottom there. go let's keep working our way down the body of the horse it's like we were doing before with our blanket stitch there we go we're almost to the tail here go zoom us in a little here. I'm gonna go right next to the tail there shades crunching on some dinner eating some dinner and then we're gonna do the same thing we did on the mane on our tail here so we're just gonna do a little pin stitch on those we want to make sure it's where we want it. And I kind of do them a little close together on the tail because the tail's not very large. Like I said, always make sure that you're getting every, all three layers of fabric in there when you go through. I'm going to do one more just for reassurance here we go oh there we go i'm gonna take that pin out and i like to remove my pins as i go now we got that tail on there nice and firm <clears throat> and we're just gonna keep with our blanket stitch here now here in a minute, we're going to probably add a little bit of uh, polyfill to the inside here because I kind of like to fill as I go so it's not so difficult to fill in gaps like smaller areas like the feet or the head. So I'm going to do probably around the leg here and the belly and then to the belly and then I'm going to fill, fill the head in with some polyfill in that way it's not too difficult to get it stuffed nicely Let's keep working our way through I'm really glad that my night of oh hit my elbow my night of work is over because I tell you what that rain and wind right now out there is rough it was kind of a rough night so i'm really glad it's over and i can sit down and relax I'm waiting for the nice weather i wish it would just come it's so cold makes it hard when the weather's rough makes for a hard week It's hard not to get caught up on the tail and things. I gotta let my I gotta let my thread untwist here. It's kind of getting twisted. Which is an easy thing to do. You just want to drop your needle and let it spin, and that kind of twisted part of it will come out of there. It'll untwist itself. Take this pin out too. Get that out of there.
for shade, I had to have all this medicine to give him. He takes an antibiotic, and he is now on a, it's like a sedative to keep him from getting squirrely. He's been a little squirrely in his uh, cage because he wants out, and I don't blame him. I get squirrely too. And he also has an ointment that he has to have put on. And he just went through that. So the poor little fella, he has been through so much. And, you know, giving a cat medicine is like pulling teeth. My goodness, they hate it. And, you know, the vet's like, oh, just mix it in with some food. And they know, somehow they know it's in that food and they will not eat it. And he knows. He's like, oh, you're trying to trick me. I know better than that. And I feel bad for him. I'm glad we got the sedative. It'll keep him from pulling on his pen. But at the same time, he's so out of it. I feel kind of bad for him. I'm just going to go right there to that corner. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to grab my polyfill. I can reach it from here yeah <clears throat> and polyfill's cheap this is what I'm using here just this uh, regular standard polyfill uh, that's for pillows dolls stuffed toys and crafts it's inexpensive you can find it pretty much at any craft store even I think I got this at Walmart so it's, it's pretty easy and you don't need a whole lot of it. So I'm just going to put a little bit aside there. Now I'm going to take these pens out because I'm confident that everything is where I want it to be. And then, see, so we still have a little opening here. So I'm going to bring you out just a little. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull just a a little bit off of there and I'm just gonna kind of push it up into the head here get that kind of pushed up in there I'm gonna kind of make sure I bring my finger down and get that nose filled in I want it to be flat just push a little bit in there and you can add to it <coughs> after we get filled up. It's just you want to get these basic parts filled in so it's a little easier. And you don't want to put too much in because you don't want it to burst at the seams. But you don't want to do too little because you want it to have some shape. So there's a little happy medium. I'm going to call it good there. I'm going to uh, sew up this belly part and then I'm going to fill in his leg back here. just like that and now I'm going to fill this part in and don't forget to fill it that's the important part we want it to be a stuffy we want him to be three-dimensional okay sew a little more and I kind of sew and stuff as I go just kind of st stuff a little sew a little kind of makes it a little more even that way too I hope I have enough thread. I think I will, but 
We will see. It's spinning up on me again. Sometimes it gets twisted in and you kind of got to let it spin a little. excited to try the rooster. I haven't done him yet, so I'm probably going to do him maybe later this evening or tomorrow or the next day, and we can do a video on him, and then we can assemble the carousel that they hang from, and that's another thing that we want to remember. I'm going to finish right there for now, and speaking of carousel, we need to attach our nylon thread for him to hang from. Now, I kind of did a longer piece because I don't know the length I'm going to hang them. So that's good enough. And I'm gonna thread that onto a needle. You can use the same one you're using, it doesn't matter. Um, I don't wanna re-thread, so I'm just gonna use another one I got here. And I'm just doing a little uh, quick knot down here at the bottom like that and then I kind of to try it try it out and test it to see how it's gonna hang I literally will like hold it from certain spots like and let it hang I'll hold it from here see if I hang it from there it's kind of angled and I kind of like it here because it it holds nice and straight. So I'm going to take my needle, open this, sorry, I had a needle in my mouth, open this a little bit, and you can go right through that polyfill, it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to poke it through from the inside and make sure that you got that knot in there, and then just pull it through. Oh, I guess my knot wasn't big enough. See, it went all the way through. We'll try that again. Get a bigger knot. That happens sometimes with felt. Okay, that should be plenty big. All right. <clears throat> and I wanted it about right here is where I'm going to do it. So I'm just poke that up and through and pull it and there you have your little your hanger for it if you want to make the carousel you don't have to do this I mean you could hang it from something else if you wanted it you could hang it from the window or your car or whatever you know you can hang it on the wall whatever you want to do with it you don't have to put a hanger on it but if you do that's how you put the hanger or the string to hang it on there. Now I'm going to stitch probably about to here and I'm going to finish stuffing the horse. So we're about done here, getting closer. There's a lot of steps to it, but man, they sure turn out really cute, don't they? Really adorable little things. I think they're really cool fun to make too. Do one more stitch here. Okay, now I'm going to finish stuffing him here. That way we can, you know, you still want to be able to get into that other foot. Try not to stuff my thread in there.
I think that's perfect. It's nice and firm, but it's not too much. Now, I'm going to make sure that's packed down. And we're going to uh, seal it up here. I'm going to retighten that last stitch. There we go. And we just stitch that together. A couple of stitches, and it'll be all one piece. And I'm going to do one right here just to reinforce that neck part there. There we go. And now we've got them all sealed up and everything. We just need to tie it a little knot and tie her off. I'm just going to go through the one I just did and do it again like that. And one more time for good measure. go and uh, felt a really great thing to work with to hide thread after you've put it together you just all you got to do is take your needle and stick it through over to the other side make sure you're going through a, a felt part and not your embroidery and pull it tight pull it good and then I'm going to take my scissors and as I pull up kind of pull on it a little bit I'm going to give it a snip just like that, and then the thread just kind of disappears in the mix. And now, that is our little horsey all put together. And now all we have to do is add the fringe for his mane and his tail, okay? And this is super simple. This takes barely nothing. I like to use my embroidery scissors for this because they're sharp and they're tiny and they work perfect for this. And so basically all you want to do is just cut a bunch of little lines and you want to make sure that they're not too close together because you don't want them to fall off and you don't want to make, you know, you don't want to go like kind of in or kind of out just enough to add a little fringe to that tail there. Okay. And then we're going to do the same on the head. Be cautious. Don't cut your hanging string, if you made a hanging string. I'm gonna kind of put that up there, actually. There we go. And for the uh, the mane, it's just the same thing. You just wanna, I just kind of cut all the way down. And I don't cut my orange. Make sure not to cut the body part, just the mane. And don't go too terribly close together, but you don't want to go far apart either. So there's a fine medium on that. And that's going to see that in that cute. That adds that little main part. This dark purple is kind of hard to see in it. Big scissors might be a little more difficult to do this with, but... These embroidery scissors come in real nice and handy when it comes to a little work like this. And I'm gonna go all the way down. And that adds the fringe for his mane. Isn't that adorable? Oh my goodness. And that, my friends, is our carousel horse. All ready to go. And this is the pink one I did. So there's two of them there. Aren't they adorable? And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you were able to make your own. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And I will have more videos coming up with these guys. 
we're going to do the roosters that go with it and hang with it. And then we're going to put the carousel together and hang them all from it. So stick around. There's going to be more to come. And uh, this is just the first installment. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You have a great night. Thanks for stopping by.